to alien abductions. So what's happened to the Carringtons and the Colbys, and why have their lives and loves proved quite so enduring? I think possibly one of the reasons why people still are interested in Dynasty is because it was bloody good. Welcome back to the wonderful world of Dynasty, or Dynasty, as they said in Denver. Said in Denver. You heard him, Blake. You're finished. You've lost everything. And I now own this house. This house? Are you insane? Oh, no. I'm perfectly sane. So take this junk and your blonde tramp and get out of my home. You are insane. This isn't your house, and it's never going to be. It's all mine, Blake. And I have the papers to prove it. If these walls to love. Your Honor, our witness has arrived. At the end of series one, Blake was on trial for murder, and the arrival of a mysterious veiled witness, played by an extra, was a drama in itself, for nobody knew who would be cast as Alexis Carrington Colby. They didn't know who was going to play the part of Alexis when they finished the season finale. They thought they, would, they were dickering with uh, Sophia Loren, but she wanted too much money, apparently. I was in Marbella, and I got this call from my agent. He said, Aaron would like you to do a show called Dynasty. And I said, what's Dynasty? And he said, well, it's been on for um, 10 or 12 episodes. He said, it's pretty far down in the ratings, but they've got quite a good cast. And I said, well, what is it? He said, it'll be, you know, a six, six or eight week gig. And, and the woman is called Alexis, and she's uh, got two children, and uh, I'll send you some pages. She was written in a very cliched, I am a bad woman way. Um, but I felt that, um, that I could maybe bring some humor in there and some lovability. Ooh, Alexis would never have behaved like this. She wouldn't have been caught dead on the underground. But Joan Collins has always known how to command an audience's complete attention. Never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care. When you put your arms around me, I get a fever that's so hard to bear. You give me fever. I told the network that's who I wanted to bring in. Play as John's ex-wife, Alexis. And I heard this voice say to me, but she's English. I said, yeah, a lot of people are, including Richard Burton. It didn't hurt him, did it? Oh, OK, Aaron. But in the 1970s, Joan's career had been suffering from rising damp. You say the sweetest things. That is, until two British films made from Sister Jackie's novels, The Stud and the Bitch, had an effect like cinematic Viagra. Easy, tiger. Like the view. They told me that they hired Joan Collins to play Alexis, and I said, Joan Collins, hmm. I don't know who she is. I have no idea. I was driving down Sunset Boulevard in a, not a particularly big billboard, but there was a small one in the building. There's a lady dressed in black with a whip, and it said, Joan Collins, the bitch. And I stopped, and I said, oh, <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> If there's one thing Dynasty excelled in, it was girl-on-girl -girl action. Cat fights and mud fights ensued as Joan Collins put the nasty into Dynasty. Alexis and Crystal were never far from a fracas, and this tranquil scene hosted one of the most famous fights of all. Set in the gardens of a sumptuous Pasadena mansion, the pond is now safely netted. But back in 1983, this is where Crystal and Alexis got deep and dirty. I came to see Fallon. I wanted to talk to her, but you've seen to that, haven't you? You knew that when Joan went to see anybody, that, that anybody was in trouble. And that she could lie, she could cheat, and always win. And, uh, you know, some of the crazy fights, mud fights, and falling in swimming pools and everything with those you know, those thousand dollar dresses on were not really the thing to do, but but it really took life when Joan came in. 
in the pond, we're scrabbling around, hitting. Linda loved all those kind of scenes. She was about three inches taller than me anyway, and big. Linda loved getting in there and doing a lot of her own stunts. Well, Joan is not one to be very physical, and I think that in the pond, it was kind of roughed out, kind of choreographed, but Linda just, I mean, Joan was trying to get out of the water, and, and, and Linda grabbed her by the leg and pulled her back in, and, you know, pounding her, trying to drown her. I think Joan thought that Linda really was trying to drown her. Everybody was in hysterics, but it, it looked great, and of course, it's one of the most memorable fights that they had. With the cast complete, Dynasty took off in the ratings like a Louis Vuitton scub missile, and an evening Shea Carrington became Derrigueur worldwide. I think it was... They really liked the character. They really liked her assertiveness. They liked the fact that he was a woman who wasn't about to be pushed around. A woman who was living her life in a man's world as a man would live it. Every man I've ever loved has tried to control me. But not anymore. Oh, I tried to become the wife you wanted, the wife that Dex needed, the woman to fit the mold. I'm going to break you. A man would not be called a bitch, as she was. A man would be called assertive, strong, dynamic, um, clever. But uh, all of those things that she was uh, were just twisted. Oh, she's a bitch. Sad. Amongst the... It really was a brush with death, and for some of the cast it all proved too much, and they succumbed to their own attack of the vapours. Pamela Sue Martin, the original Fallon, did a runner in season four, something her screen mother has never quite understood. Acting's the most perilous profession. We are mostly out of work. To be in a long-running series in which you're getting paid so well, in which you are a household name, in which everybody knows you, uh, who's going to complain? A couple of the actors left. Pamela Sue Martin left. I said, you're crazy. What are you going to do? I'm going to do movies. Yeah? What, what movies has she been in? Look, Daddy, to see you. They had a black and white Gerard, ball in the show, and this is what Linda was wearing when she arrived <clears throat> at the ball, in black and white, and then Alexis, Joan Collins, came downstairs in a red gown. Nolan started off working with people like uh, Joan Crawford and Lana Turner, women who were very stylish and uh, elegant and loved um, the clothes to fit perfectly and... Uh, and this is what I thought Alexis should have. I'm going to do all the things for you a girl wants a man to do. Combine okay. style savvy Joan Collins with a designer who loved dressing glamorous women and TV magic was made. Alexis became an 80s fashion icon. I said, Nolan, hats, veils, gloves. Let's do that because that's a great look. And pink, molly and furs and boas. And um, I said, I think it'll add to the character. It'll make her uh, more seductive, more alluring. She's like the Black Widow spider. Come here. But she's beautifully dressed when she does it. I'm going to use every trick in the book. I'll try my best to get you hooked. Hey, baby. Take me, I'm yours. Joan and I had such a great rapport on that show. She'd say, what about this? And I'd say, what if we make it white? She'd say, what if we trim it in fur? And I'd go, you know, how about a hat? It, it, so it was great. She would occasionally look at me and she'd say, do you think we've gone over the top? I'd say, no. <laughs> if this was an expensive dress for Linda Evans. This is all completely appliqued on by hand and then beaded over the entire dress. I'm going to ask you something, Alexis. What? Are you so insecure that you'll go to any extreme to get what you want? What is enough enough? When I say so. Nothing was impossible. Nothing. He'd say, right, you have a ball, a ball gown scene coming up on Monday. This would be Friday. What do you want to wear? I said, well, maybe pink with big bows on the shoulder, very small waist, low cut, huge skirt. And, um, and then I can wear it when I meet the Queen Mother, when I go to the Royal Command Performance next month or something. And uh, they'd do it. This was a gown that we did for Joan Collins. 
She only wore this for a couple of minutes, but it's completely hand beaded and, uh, you know, with, with a great deal of, of uh, glitter and stones. All of these kind of dresses ran an average of $5,000 a dress. Once I wore a Pierre Cardin suit, and I think it had felt like wings on it. And I had a scene on the telephone, and all you could see was the, the, the cameraman kept on saying, move the, move the feathers, move. I said, they're not feathers, they're felt um, accessories. <laughs> Looking through old magazines of that time, I think that women looked fabulous, fabulous. They'll never look like that again. Very, very good, Lake, and Such was Dynasty's allure that guest stars queued up to appear, including ex-president Gerald Ford and Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, a famous diplomat, but as an actor, more wooden than a sail at Ikea. Henry was a good sport, and he had been told just to walk through, and, I, so I, and then I said, what am I supposed to say? They said, well, say anything that you'd say to somebody at a big party that you knew vaguely, so I said... Henry, hello. Hello, Alexis. Good to see you. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you since Portofino. Henry, I haven't seen you since Portofino. And he had a sort of stunned look on his face, and then I went off to speak to somebody else. I don't think he quite knew what Portofino was. It was fun. I got a call from him about two days later, said... For peanuts. <laughs> I kind of think so. I started off $15,000 a week. That was the first year. The second year, it went to $20,000. Now, if you know what, uh, what actors get now, I never got more than $100,000, and that was only in the last year or two. I would love to be able to say that I lived off the earnings of Dynasty, but I had to have two secretaries, I had to have bodyguards, I had to have nannies for my children. Uh, believe me, I, I did not have great savings from having done Dynasty, not at all. What was it like? It was great. It was great being number one. But as I said to a reporter, she said, what are you going to do if all this finishes? I said, it isn't a question of if, it's a question of when. And if our scripts don't start getting better, it's going to be sooner than later. In the beginning, it was. <laughs> so I think the Dynasty guys were better. Whether adding an ironic touch of class to a pop video or spreading herself across the pages of Hello, Joan Collins remains a glamour babe through and through. Even Alexis herself couldn't have asked for more. I mean, there's Elizabeth Taylor, there's Sophia Loren, there's Joan Collins, and who? As divas, as superstars. Who? I mean, those three can push the headlines of the war off the front page with their latest affair. <laughs> now, he's the most wonderful human being she's ever met, apparently. He's called Percy Gibson. He's said to be Joan Collins's fifth husband. Joan Collins greeted the press today outside her London home and started off by rearranging her marital history. Oh, it's not number five. You don't count teenage marriages. <laughs> they don't count. John Collins called me from London to say that she was going to be married and uh, would I like to do her wedding dress? And I said, but of course, I've done so many for her. You know, on Dynasty, every, every season she got married at least once. I went to London for the wedding and I must say it was like shooting Dynasty. It was so lavish, it was so fabulous, it was so perfect that everyone in the, in the audience kept saying, this is like Dynasty. This is like Dynasty. So it was absolutely beautiful wedding. Well, now it takes more than a robin. Describe my life. Well, I get up in the morning and have a cup of coffee, read the papers. Describe your life. I'm very happy. I've just been married for two months to a wonderful guy. <laughs> But I'm very happy and very content and live my life between London, South of France, and New York. Where are we going? Do I get to meet Percy? Oh! Yes, he's wonderful. Yes, he's wonderful. Lovely. That's it.
And baby, you've got what it takes. When John James... They used to call me Dow James. Now, he's rich, John James. John James, in fact, John Forsyth used to complain about him. Where's JJ? I said, he's on the phone talking to his broker. I said, all he ever does is talk to his broker. I said, yeah, well, you know, he's probably smarter than all of us. He's making investments. And you know something? He was, because he doesn't have to work again. 